Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a Diophantin system. If you like this video, please comment, like and subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications. And you can also consider becoming a member to support the channel. And without further ado, let's get started. So we do have the system 8x plus 5y plus z is equal to 100, x plus y plus z is equal to 20, and we're looking for integer solutions. In this case, I would like to kind of oversimplify the problem and look for positive integers. We can also talk about the general case and you can kind of find integer, uh, negative integers as well. Okay, now, how do we proceed? Well, first of all, notice that this is a Diophantin system. So there are two equations, but why is it a Diophantin system or why is it Diophantin? Because first of all, we're looking for integer solutions. Second, we only have two equations, but three variables. Okay. So if you look for real solutions, there will be infinitely many real solutions to this equation, obviously. Okay, now, how do we go about solving this system? Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and subtract these two systems because notice that z will be eliminated. So if you go ahead and subtract 8x plus 5y plus z minus x plus y plus z, you'll end up with 80, right? And then notice that the z is going to cancel out and we will have 8x minus x, which is 7x, 5y minus y will be 4y, okay? Now, you know that uh, in a previous video, we talked about Diophantin equation and the solution methods. And one of the types of Diophantin equations was a linear Diophantin equation. So this is a linear Diophantin equation with two variables and we can find the solutions, but there are some requirements, obviously, right? So the first thing you check is the greatest common factor of seven and four, or greatest common divisor. What divides seven and four? The greatest number is one in this case. So, and you also have to make sure that whatever divides the left-hand side should also divide the right-hand side. Otherwise, you'll have a problem and there will be no solutions. Okay, cool. In this case, we're good because seven and four are relatively prime. So we'll always have solutions, especially when we're looking for positive solutions, there's going to be more restrictions and it's going to be a little easier to solve as well. But what was the method for solving these types of, of equations? So I'm going to show you two approaches here. The first approach is what we talked about in the video before, and that involves modular arithmetic. So let's go ahead and uh, look at this equation from a mod four perspective. The reason why I pick mod four is because the coefficient of y is four. It's also good because 80 is divisible by four as well. So you don't have to use mod. You can also say, hey, you know what? 4y is a multiple of four, 80 is a multiple of four, therefore seven x needs to be a multiple of four as well. So you can proceed that way too. But from a mod four perspective, we can safely say that if you mod four both sides, in other words, you'll get seven x is being congruent to zero mod four, right? And what is that supposed to mean? Well, seven times what equals zero, it should be in this case, x is congruent to zero. And remember that this is mod four. So what is that supposed to mean? We're not saying that x equals zero is a solution, first of all, because we're looking for positive integers first, right? Or next, whatever. And so x equals zero would not be valid in that sense, right? But we're just saying that all solutions are going to satisfy this general criterion, criterion which is um, all numbers that are multiples of four, right? All numbers that are zero mod four. Okay, now how do we express this as an equation? So x is congruent to zero mod four. So I can safely say that x is a multiple of four. So I can write it as x equals four k, where k is an integer. Okay, cool. Now, to find y basically, what we need to do is go ahead and substitute this into our original equation, not the original system, but this equation right here, and then solving for y from there. And we should get a solution because x equals 4k definitely satisfies this equation, so y should also work out. So let's go ahead and substitute that value into the equation. Let's see what we get. 7 times 4k from here, basically, I'm replacing x with 4k, plus 4 times y, I don't know what it is yet at this point, so it equals 80. Now notice that this is not a congruent statement, it's just an equality. So we can just go ahead and isolate. Uh, but one thing you can do here is divide everything by 4, and that should give you 7k plus y is equal to 20. 
And notice that we found x in terms of k, which is a parameter, which is another variable, sort of. So we can do the same thing for y. If you isolate y here, you'll be getting y equals 20 minus 7k. Basically just the method for solving Diophantine equations that are linear. Okay, cool. So we got our solutions. And these are all the solutions because it's comprehensive. But this is like a general solution in other words, right? So what this tells you is, so I do have this ordered pair for x comma y, 4k comma 20 minus 7k. And k is an integer. So basically, I can replace k with any integer value, and I should be getting a solution as an ordered pair. For example, if k equals 0, I'll be, get, I'll be getting 0 comma 20. Is this a solution of the original equation? Yes. Is that a solution of the system? Well, of course, it is, right? But here's the thing. We only found x and y, right? But is it, there's a z in the equation. How do you solve for z? Great. Okay, good question. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to use the second equation because it's a little easier to handle. It's x plus y plus z is equal to 20, right? And I know x and y in terms of k. So x is equal to 4k. Let me copy that here. x is equal to 4k. And well, actually, I had that already. Never mind. So I have x and y. So what I'm going to do is I'll substitute these values into my equation. Let's go ahead and do that. Replace x with 4k y with 20 minus 7k. And what are you going to get from here? You're going to get the z values. And z is going to be in terms of k as well, of course. So if you solve for z, then obviously what you're going to get from here is because these two are going to cancel out, obviously, right? And notice that x plus y is going to give you negative 3k, 20. But 20 is going to cancel out, in other words. So from here, you should be getting something like z equals 3k. Okay? So now, I was able to get basically all the variables together. Now this one and this one should give me my ordered triple. So I'm not looking for ordered pairs, but ordered triple. So let's go ahead and write down the solution as an ordered triple first. So x would be 4k, y would be 20 minus 7k, and then z would be 3k. Okay, interesting, right? So x is always a multiple of 4, z is always a multiple of 3, and y is kind of a little different. Now, again, we're looking for positive integer solutions. This is the general solution, obviously, where k is an integer. This should generate, obviously, infinitely many ordered triples. But if you're looking for positive solutions, you got to make sure that all your k values make everything positive. So, for example, k equals 1 is valid because if you use k equals 1, you get 4, 13, 3. So that's one of the positive order triples. And if you use k equals 2, it's also going to work. You would, be, you would be getting 8, 20 minus 14 is equal to 6. And 2 times 3 will also be, will also be 6. So you'll be getting 8, 6, 6. Now, if you replace k with 3, then you'll notice that from here, y value is going to be 20 minus 21, which is less than zero. And you don't want that because you're looking for positive integer solutions. But as I said earlier, this gives you all the solutions, right? This basically gives you all the sol solutions. So this is a general solution method or general solution. And these are specific solutions where we're looking for positives. Okay, so I told you that I was going to also tell you something else about the system, the second approach. Obviously, you don't have to kind of go ahead and uh, solve this using modular arithmetic. 7x plus 4y is equal to 80, right? That's what we got from there. 7x plus 4y is equal to 80. Now, in this case, since numbers are kind of small, notice that we're looking for positive integers. So 7x needs to be less than 80. We know that, right? So what is that? What does that tell you? Well, 7x is less than 80 and x is an integer. So if, for example, if x is equal to 8, it's going to be 56, so that's going to be fine. If x is equal to 10, it's going to be fine. If x is equal to 11, it's not going to be fine. But if, if x is 12, that's not going to be okay. So x needs to be less than 12, right? Okay, so that's what, one thing we know. And then uh, we can just go ahead and look at the y values. But one thing to notice, again, from a modular perspective, because that'll make it easier to solve, 
that this is a multiple of four, this is a multiple of four, so this needs to be a multiple of four. What does it mean for seven times something to be a multiple of four? Seven doesn't contain any fours because it's prime, therefore x has to be a multiple of four. So you're basically looking for multiples of four that are less than 12, and the only uh, positive solutions you're gonna get from there are gonna be x equals four and x equals eight. So you could also proceed this way, or you could definitely just plug in numbers, like for example, x less than 12 means can I test 11? Okay, if you replace x with 11, you're gonna get, you're gonna get 77, 4y equals three doesn't give you an integer, x equals 10 doesn't give you an integer solution, x equals nine doesn't work, x equals eight works. That way you can also do trial and error, but notice that it's time consuming, all right? I think this brings us to the end of this video. We found all the positive solutions. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you tomorrow. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe in another video tomorrow at the same time. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.